Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here. Mixing with Easy Drummer. How do you export your individual tracks and mix them within your DAW? It's a question that I get often, and honestly, it's a good one because it's not really that straightforward. Yet, once you understand how to do it, it's actually pretty simple. So to show you how to do this, I'm actually gonna use a real world example of a project that I'm currently working on where I used Easy Drummer. So if we look at my session here, we have some tracks. I have my Easy Drummer track here, which is a virtual instrument with Easy Drummer loaded on top of it or within it. I have two rhythm guitar tracks, a bass track and some overdubs and a master track. That's it. Now what's unique about this specific session here is that it's actually a combination of pre-production and the final production. And this is because I'm gonna be doing two versions at the end of this song. One version where I'm only using amp sims and Easy Drummer and another version where I'm using real drums and reamping the guitar tones through real live tube amps. So what you're gonna be hearing are my final guitar performances with amp sims and only unmixed Easy Drummer tracks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the sample and then I'm gonna show you how I route my individual Easy Drummer drum tracks from within Easy Drummer out to tracks within my DAW in preparation for proper mixing. Well, let's just take a quick listen to what this uh, song sounds like. Let's check it out. All right, so you pretty much get the idea. It's just a straightforward, thrashy, you know, death metal-y kind of track with some semi-technical riffs and some faster drum performances. So now for my guitar tracks, even though these aren't mixed yet, uh, I just have two DIs, one on the left, one on the right, and I'm only using the TSC Audio X50 plugin, which I wish they would update to work with the newer versions of Mac OS. So uh, if you work at TSC, please update this plugin. I'm gonna miss it when I move to my new computer. But anyway, I'm using it with my custom impulse response, which you could download for absolutely free. There's a link below in this video's description if you dig this guitar tone. So again, my guitar and bass performances are final. I'm gonna be doing two versions uh, within two different productions, one using this exact tone and one using a real live tube amp, uh, just to showcase the differences between a live production and an in-box production. And when we get to that, you'll be surprised to hear just how close they actually will end up sounding. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about exporting these easy drummer tracks that you're currently listening to within this version of the production. So let's dig into Easy Drummer. Now I'm using the Metal Machine Pack uh, for Easy Drummer 2. It doesn't matter, you can apply anything that you learn within this video to any version of Easy Drummer. It's pretty much universal and it also doesn't matter what DAW you're using. The philosophies and principles uh, will work with any DAW. So now, Easy Drummer sounds great. It's almost pre-mixed. But again, if you're doing a proper mix, you're gonna want a little more control over your Easy Drummer tracks as far as EQ, maybe a little bit of compression, dynamics, and maybe even reverb and ambience types of effects. So if we look in the actual Easy Drummer mixer, um, we get a bunch of stuff here. We have our individual drums. We even have a reverb thrown in here, a bunch of stuff. But again, I wanna have more control over these Easy Drummer sounds. As of right now, I can really only affect panning and level. Now, whether it's subscribers on YouTube or members of my courses, people often ask how, how you can get these drum sounds out to your DAW. And even though it's actually really simple, it takes a little bit of tweaking on the user's end and I'll explain to you right now how to do it. So here's the thing, by default, all of your drum tracks are routed through Easy Drummer's output one, which is a stereo output. This is the output that we're currently listening to. So if we look here, all of my Easy Drummer tracks are being routed through Easy Drummer's channel one, which is just its stereo output. Now what we need to do is route our individual drum tracks out through their individual outputs. Now here's the thing, when it comes to mixing, you generally wanna be working with mono tracks, especially if the source is mono. So for example, if I'm working with a snare drum and the source is mono, I don't wanna have a resulting stereo snare track again when the source is mono. And the problem with Easy Drummer is that all of its outputs are stereo. So the way that I get around this is that I assign each of the individual drums to a specific output and hard pan that output so I only end up 
resulting with mono tracks. Now, if this is confusing to you, don't worry, I will show you in real time how I accomplish this. Now, the stereo outputs that Easy Drummer comes with make sense because if you wanna pan with an Easy Drummer, you could pan your tracks. But again, we wanna do all of our panning, all of our effects, all of our compression, all of our EQ within our DAW if we wanna get detailed with our mixing of our Easy Drummer tracks. Now, the preset that you see here is for my metal tracking. So I don't need multi-output while I'm tracking, but when I mix, I do because I wanna export these tracks to real audio. So I have a preset here that's called Metal Drum Kit for Export. And when I click on it, all of a sudden, if you look at all of my panning, they're all hard panned. And if you look at my outputs, they all have their own individual outputs. Let me explain. Now the Metal Machine pack that I'm using has two kick drums, but I wanna sum them to a mono channel because I only wanna be mixing one single kick channel in my final production. So the way I do this, and you might not have to do this if you're not using two kick drums, but I am. So the way I do this is I pan both of my kick tracks hard left on channel two, because remember the outputs of Easy Drummer are stereo and all a stereo output actually is, is two mono outputs hard panned. So again, my kick drums are on channel two, being sent out through channel two, hard left. My snare top is also on channel two, but panned hard right. So when I set up all my buses for exporting, channel two will be kick on the left and snare on the right. Snare bottom is channel three, hard panned left. My hi-hat is channel three, hard panned right. Rack tom one, channel four, left. Rock Tom 2, Channel 4, right, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look in the Easy Drummer Mixer, depending on the kit that you're using, some of the actual tracks might be stereo, which is okay. So for example, my overheads are naturally stereo with an Easy Drummer. And the same thing with my ambience mics. Because of this, I'm only using output seven and output eight, again, because it makes sense. The source is stereo, so I can use the whole resulting stereo output. I don't have to do anything separate with the panning here. Now, for me personally, I don't use within my mix the mono room mic, the reverb, and the shaker, or any of this other stuff. So I'm only grabbing my kick drums all the way through to my stereo ambient room mics. Now, here's the thing. Now that everything is routed this way, if I press play, let's see what happens. You don't hear drums. And this is because we are no longer using the main output of Easy Drummer's mixer. The main output by default is channel one, and I'm using channels two through eight. And because of this, we don't hear any drums right now. So what I need to do is set up auxiliary tracks and route these individual Easy Drummer uh, tracks from within Easy Drummer out to auxiliary tracks within my DAW. Now, as you probably know, I'm all about efficiency and saving time, especially because I'm working on so many projects at once, I don't have time to make this template from scratch every single time, but the process is extremely straightforward once you have it up and running. Okay, so I just imported my auxiliary tracks that are already pre-routed to my Easy Drummer's outputs, so I don't have to do all of this from scratch, but I wanna to explain to you the exact routing so you could duplicate this within your own DAW. Now, I also wanna mention this because this also confuses a lot of people. I'm using Pro Tools. If you look at my auxiliary tracks, they have no physical audio on them. Audio passes through them. Now, the reason why this confuses people is because multiple DAWs call these tracks different things. For example, within Reaper, you only have tracks. There are no auxiliary tracks, but you can route your Easy Drummer in a very similar way. And just recently I had a student ask me about this and he was confused because in Cubase, they're called group tracks. So in Cubase, you would make mono group tracks to accomplish the exact same task that I'm accomplishing within this video. So what I'm gonna do now is play back a quick snippet of the audio sample, and if you notice, you'll notice all of my signal being routed to these auxiliary tracks. And if you're in Cubase, they would be group tracks, and if you're in Reaper, they would be tracks, so on and so forth. Just wanna be clear, so let's check it out. Yeah, so right now, all of my individual drum tracks within Easy Drummer are being routed to my auxiliary tracks, my individual mono auxiliary tracks. Now, I have no plugins on these tracks. It's just bare bones, but I do have some panning and some overall level dialed in. So if you notice my kick drum here, 
is panned up the center. My snare drum is panned up the center. I'm doing a little bit of panning on my toms. My overheads are hard panned and my rooms are hard panned. And if we look at the actual inputs to a few of these tracks, my kick drum here, if we look, is set to Easy Drummer's output to left. Because remember, the stereo outputs with an Easy Drummer are nothing more than two mono tracks or two mono outputs. And if you remember from the snare drum, it's channel two, but channel two right side. And my snare bottom or my snare down is channel three, channel three on the left side, and so on and so forth. So when you think about it, it's extremely straightforward. All I'm doing is routing my Easy Drummer tracks from within Easy Drummer straight out through to my DAW so I can mix these tracks in much greater detail with more control. Now, I don't wanna stop here. A lot of people will take this step and they'll route their, you know, their, their program drums out through auxiliary tracks or group tracks or whatever and apply compression, EQ, and all that stuff. I take it a step further. I wanna commit these auxiliary tracks to actual audio. People often ask me, why do I bother doing this? And it's simple. One, it saves a little bit of CPU because I can kind of kill my Easy Drummer track and not have it constantly up and running when I'm mixing my song. The second reason is I like to commit my performances so I'm not tempted to always go back and tweak them. Just like with amp sims, when I'm doing an actual production, I'll print my amp sims to actual audio so I don't constantly tweak my amp sim. And the third and most important reason is I want to commit the performance so that it's exactly the same each time. Now, if you're not familiar with how drum software works, for example, Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Get Good Drums, or any of these other drum programs, they randomly switch out the samples that they're using to make them sound natural, which is a great thing. This is why these programs are so killer. But what this means is every time you press play within your DAW, you might be hearing something slightly different. This is why once I have everything dialed in, I want to commit my tracks so I know they are exactly the same every time I press play, just as if I recorded live drums. This is great because I can mix in a very similar way to how I would mix, you know, a live production with tube amps and real drums. And what's great about utilizing a routing similar to what I'm doing within this video is that it's so simple once you have everything routed. For example, all I have to do is grab all my auxiliary tracks, and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna commit them. Again, this confuses people. Commit within Pro Tools is sort of like bounce within other DAWs or render. Pretty much what I'm doing is I'm taking these tracks and converting them to audio. So let's do that. Come on, baby, you got this. Okay, so if we look now, we have our drum MIDI way up here. All of our auxiliary tracks are inactive and now we have physical, real deal audio tracks that I can mix. So what I'm gonna do now is take my Easy Drummer track and make it inactive to save on some CPU. I'll hide all of these tracks that I no longer need. And uh, let's press play and see what we got. So there you go, I have physical, real audio tracks of all of my individual Easy Drummer tracks that are ready to be mixed. So tell me, do you use Easy Drummer? Have you ever thought to do this to actually print your Easy Drummer tracks so you can mix them just as if they were live drum tracks? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear your opinion. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things Metal and Rock Production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And again, if you dug the guitar tone, the raw guitar tone that you heard within this video, you can download the exact same impulse response that I'm utilizing within this production and the final production by clicking on the link below this video. Download the IR for absolutely free, load it into your favorite Amsim plugin and get right to dialing in killer metal guitar tone with absolute ease. And until next time, happy mixing.